Hello everyone, welcome back and in today's video, we'll cover a problem from impulse and momentum chapter. So in this question, we have a small block that rests on a on flat bottom of a deep bowl that is placed on a horizontal floor. So there is no friction anywhere. Total mass of the system is capital M. If the bowl is given a horizontal velocity by a sharp hit, the block rises to a maximum height h sliding on the walls of the bowl. So then we have to comment on the maximum and the minimum kinetic energy of the bowl. Okay, so initially the bowl was given a horizontal impulse, which means it will gain some velocity. Let's say the velocity was u, okay? And let's say the mass of the bowl is m1 and the mass of the block is m2. So, so it's given that m1 plus m2 equals capital M. So now what's going to happen is that this bowl will move towards the right and the block will remain stationary for a while because there's no force acting on the block in the horizontal direction. And the motion will continue till, till this configuration is reached. And uh, till this configuration, again, the velocity is going to remain unchanged, right? Now, what's going to happen after this is that the, the block will start climbing on the surface of this bowl. And when the block reaches a maximum height, and its value is given to be capital H in the problem. And finally, when the block will reach the maximum height, its relative velocity with respect to the bowl will come to zero. Basically, it will move with the same velocity as the bowl. Okay guys, so now the thing is, we can easily solve this using momentum and energy conservation. Uh, I want to discuss this problem using the center of mass frame. So we, so for that, we'll discuss a few concepts and then we'll come back again to this problem, okay? So what we are going to discuss right now is uh, applicable to two particle systems. So basically, let's take any two particles whose masses are m1 and m2 respectively. And let's say the velocity of mass m1 is v1 vector and the velocity of mass m2 v2 vector. So now we can easily write the velocity of the center of mass as m1 v1 plus m2 v2 divided by m1 plus m2. Okay, so the first thing that we are trying to figure out is the momentum of particle 1 and particle 2 in the center of mass frame. So the momentum of a particle, first of all, it is defined as the mass times its velocity, right? So let's say we are trying to figure out the momentum of particle 1 in the center of mass frame. So let's write it as P subscript 1 relative to Cm. Okay, so this will just come out to be the mass of the particle, which is m1, uh, times its velocity relative to the center of mass frame. And the velocity of particle 1 relative to the center of mass frame is going to be v1 minus vcm. So now what we're going to do is substitute the value of vcm in it. And as we can see, m1, v1 cancels out. This expression simplifies as m1, m2 divided by m1 plus m2 times v1 vector minus v2 vector. So this is the momentum of particle 1 in the center of mass frame. Okay, and this thing over here, we call it as a reduced mass and we just represent it using the symbol of mu. V1 vector minus V2 vector is just the difference in velocity vectors of these two particles. And this thing, we are going to call it as V rel. Okay, meaning the relative velocity. Guys, you can do the exact same thing to figure out the momentum of particle 2 in the CM frame. And this will come out to be mu times V2 vector minus V1 vector. Okay, so you guys can actually try to solve it which is just the negative of this. Okay, so let's say we have a system in which one block is moving towards the right with a velocity of u in the ground frame, and the other mass has a mass of m2. And now if you want to write its momentum in the cm frame, it will be the reduced mass mu times the relative velocity. So it is going to be u minus zero, which is going to be u. And the momentum of the other mass is going to be mu times u in the other direction. So this is how the uh, this is how we write the momentum in the center of mass frame. There's also one more important uh, result from here, guys, and that is the net momentum in the center of mass frame, which means P1 plus P2. If you add both of them, you'll get the answer as zero. Momentum of M1, you can see it is mu u towards the right. So the momentum of M2 will be mu u towards the left. Okay, guys, so the next result is the kinetic energy of the system of particles in the center of mass frame. So this is going to be kinetic energy of particle one in the CM frame plus kinetic energy of particle two in the CM frame. So either you can like write it this way. This is the most uh, basic way of doing it. So you, you figure out the speed of the individual particles in the center of mass frame and do sigma half mi vi square. But uh, there is a better way of doing this. So we also know that the kinetic energy is nothing but the moment magnitude of the momentum squared divided by 2m. So we'll use this because we, because we know the magnitude of the momentum, right? So using the momentum result, we know that they both of their momentums in terms of magnitude are equal to mu v rel. So p squared divided by 2m1 plus p squared divided by 2m2. And uh, solving a bit, we get this expression. Now guys, 1 by m1 plus 1 by m2 is nothing but 1 by mu. So I can cancel out 1 mu. And finally, you'll we'll get the expression half mu v rel squared. So in the CM frame, the kinetic energy of mass 1 plus the kinetic energy of mass 2 is half mu 
VREL squared. Okay. So there is one more result, but we'll discuss that while we are solving the problem. Okay, guys. Now, if you observe the first question, they're asking, what is the maximum kinetic energy of the bowel? This question is pretty trivial if you observe because initially the kinetic energy of the bowel is half m1 u squared, right? And the block is at rest. Now the thing is, as the block starts climbing, it will apply a normal force on the bowel and it will start to decelerate the bowel, right? And at this instant, the speed is v, but as it comes down also, it will apply the normal force in the backward direction. So it will still decelerate. So you can answer the first question using conservation of mechanical energy. So we know that half m1 u squared is going to be conserved throughout the motion. So it can only be converted between the kinetic energy and the potential energies of this block. So if initially both kinetic energy and potential energy of the block is zero, it means the initial instant is the instant when the kinetic energy of the bowel is maximum. So, so the maximum kinetic energy of the bowel is going to be half half m1 u squared but they are claiming it is equal to mgh so, so we need to write it in terms of this height h okay so for this we are going to use the center of mass result which we just derived so in the center of mass frame the initial kinetic energy i can write it as half mu u rel squared and u relative is the dif difference in the initial velocity vectors of both the masses right so which is just u so this is just half mu u squared guys finally this is the ground frame picture so as i discussed both of them will have the same velocity v so in the cm frame it will be half mu v rel squared so this is just going to be zero as their relative speeds are going to be zero right and now we can clearly see that the change in potential energy is going to be m2 gh as the mass m2 climbed distance of h so now we can conserve energy between the initial and final states and we can easily write the initial kinetic energy, which is half mu u squared equals the change in potential energy, which is m2 g h. Okay, and after solving, we obtain half m1 u squared equals mg capital H. And if you observe half m1 u squared was the maximum kinetic energy. So we can also write it as capital MG. And this is what was asked in the first question. So option A is actually correct. The other options we have to figure out about the minimum kinetic energy. Okay guys, so uh, again, as we discussed, this is the state where the kinetic energy of the bowel is maximum. So now the block is going to climb the bowel, right? During the process of climbing and coming down, normal is acting such that it decelerates the bowel. Okay guys, so now when the block comes down again, the block will have some velocity, let's call it V2 and the bowel V1. Okay guys, so this is where, you know, the things start to get complicated if we solve this problem in the ground frame, because there could be multiple cases happening, right? So, and the multiple cases include, let's say this V1 could just be zero, as well as my in the other direction as well because because as the block is coming down the bowel is being decelerated so the velocity can can be zero or basically also change its direction when the block reaches the ground so v1 can be basically zero or in the other direction as well okay and for this we are going to take the help of the center of mass frame so in the ground frame the bowel had a velocity of u right so in the cm frame the bowel will have a rightward momentum of mu u and blocks momentum will be mu u towards the left. So again, we are observing with the COM frame. And when the block reaches maximum height, uh, both of them will simultaneously come to rest in the center of mass frame because the net momentum in the center of mass frame is zero. So this is what's happening in the CM frame. Okay guys, so now the thing is what's happening here is when the initially the kinetic energy is half mu u squared got converted into the potential energy of the block. But the thing is as energy is conserved, when the block comes to the ground again, again its kinetic energy should be half mu u squared, which means the final u rel is also going to be u, right? So I can write the final momentum of the block when it came down as mu u towards the right and the momentum of the bowel as mu u towards the left. So now guys, observe the small block over here. Its momentum was initially mu u towards the left and finally mu u towards the right. The change in momentum is actually 2 mu u towards the right. Now who's changing the momentum? It's actually be because of the impulse due to the normal reaction, right? So in the block, uh, while it was climbing, there was a normal force N acting on it, whose horizontal component actually changed the horizontal momentum. So, so we finally figured out that the horizontal impulse due to normal reaction is 2 mu u towards the right. Okay, so now an important concept 
the momentum that we figured out was frame dependent right because it depends on velocity similarly kinetic energy is also frame dependent but the impulses guys it is just this integral of f dt where f is a real force so in this case the impulse was applied on the block by the normal reaction and the normal reaction is a real force right M meaning it is actually frame independent which basically means that the impulse due to a real force is actually frame independent so the normal reaction impulse that we just figured out which came out to be 2 mu u towards the right is the same impulse that acts on the block even in ground frame so now the thing is as we want to analyze the bowels kinetic energy let's figure out its impulse so on the bowel the normal reaction is acting towards the left and it, it changed the momentum of the bowel by 2 mu u towards the left right so basically if the 2 mu u impulse that acted on the bowel if it is greater than the initial momentum then what will happen is that the final momentum will be towards the left and if 2 mu u is equal to mu then the bowel will come to rest and if 2 mu u is less than mu then the bowel will still have a forward momentum so this is the main concept so basically what i'm saying is if the impulse due to normal reaction is greater greater than the initial horizontal momentum of the bowel which was m1 times u then we can conclusively say that the final velocity which we took it as v1 is towards the left so and jn we figured it out it is 2 mu times u if it is greater than m1 into u and after solving this, uh, this inequality we obtain that m2 is greater than m1 if the block is heavier than the bowel then the velocity of the bowel will reverse its direction so if you check the options they're saying if the bowel is lighter than the block which we are, uh, which is what we obtained in the inequality minimum kinetic energy of the bowel is zero this is actually true because because what we obtained here is that if m1 is greater than m2 then v2 v1 will be towards the left so the initial velocity vector was towards the right and the final velocity vector is towards the left so there was some point in in between where the velocity of the bowel was zero which means the minimum kinetic energy would be zero because remember guys kinetic energy is always greater than or equal to zero so its minimum will always be zero so option b is also correct so option c says that uh, to predict the minimum kinetic energy of the bowel we must know the ratio of the masses option d says that it is the case even for maximum kinetic energy which is not true right because for maximum kinetic energy we figure it is just capital mgh so we don't need the ratio of masses so option d is wrong now for option c uh, we have to figure out what is the exact minimum kinetic energy okay so the initial uh, hor horizontal velocity of the bowel was u and final velocity is actually v1 and the impulse due to normal reaction was equal to 2 mu u so now we can use uh, impulse momentum theorem so according to impulse momentum theorem we can say that m1 u which is the initial momentum plus the impulse which is actually in the opposite direction to the initial momentum which means we have to use a minus sign 2 mu u equal to the final momentum which is m1 into v1 so from here we can see that v1 is equal to okay and this is the value of v1 that we obtained so here you can see that if i divide numerator and denominator by m1 we can clearly see that we need the ratio of the masses to figure out the value of v1 which is the minimum speed of the bowel right to predict the minimum velocity minimum kinetic energy of the bowel we must know the ratio would also be correct so the answer to this question is a b c okay so that was it for this video guys if you have any doubts you can comment down below and that's it thanks for watching